It's pasta night and we're having didalini. What is didalini? It is a pasta that's little short pasta and it has holes in it and it's perfect for holding in a lot of yumminess and mostly didalini is used for soups. Um, you can use it for salads. It's great for macaroni salad or pasta salad also because it holds uh, all that goodness. In there so we're gonna make a dish today it's um, a new dish I'm creating it's a three green didalini uh, pasta dish and stay tuned and watch it watch me make this new creation and we'll see if you like it and if you want to give it a whirl okay my last shot I forgot my audio so <laughs> technical difficulty so <laughs> I've already have this sausage so let me back up and say there's a sausage that I'm using it's the first time I've ever used it and I thought it would taste perfect in this dish it's called longanisa uh, you'll find that like around where the other sausages are in your grocery store um, it was near chorizo and um, that package let me stop myself there's a half a cup of water. I'm cooking it in a half a cup of water until the water evaporates, and then we're gonna brown it up. But anyway, this sausage, it was, uh, it, it's called a Mexican sausage, but when I looked it up online, because I never heard of this sausage before, it's a Filipino, it's Filipinos uh, use this in uh, some of their dishes, and I thought, I'm gonna give it a try. It is, um, it's got, like a sweetness to it, paprika, vinegar, and very garlicky. And I thought this is going to be a, a garlicky uh, sauce. I want to make a nice butter garlic sauce um, for this dish. So I'm just going to let this evaporate, cook down, and br we'll brown it up a little bit. Then we'll, um, this is going to be a fast dish. We've got to steam some uh, broccolini, cut up some... Uh, shallots and it's gonna be a really good dish can't wait I've been thinking about it got the sausage cooking up I'll show you that in a minute I'm gonna take my pasta here our didalini because it is pasta night and I'm not in the shot so that would help right you know what? let's move it over here You can hear that sausage cooking. I used not a whole box, a half a box, because I'm not making a huge portion. I don't know how well this will reheat, so I don't want to make a huge portion. This is my first time making this dish. Like I was telling you, I've kind of been thinking about it. Ooh, look at that. Let's turn it down some. It is breaking a little bit. I just want to be gentle with that. I'm going to clean up my stove. That's one of my things I can't stand is all the splatter. I need to, I've been cooking for 50 years. You think I've been married over 40 years? Then you think I'd buy myself a, one of those splatter screens? That's going to be on my list, okay? I'm going to get it in the next month. Maybe less than that. We'll see. We'll see how long I can wait. I've procrastinated 40, 40 years. What's a, a couple more weeks? So I have the water uh, heating up again because I want to steam our broccoli meat. And after I get this uh longanisa browned up i'm gonna put it i think i'm gonna put it aside on a plate or just turn it down so it's time to steam up that broccoli i'm gonna very gently and i might take this off the heat for a second and put it on low because i got so many things going on
So I have a couple of colanders, and I always use one for gluten and one for non gluten things. And I usually use this like for fruits and vegetables. It's this middle metal one. You know, I have grandkids that have celiac, so try not to cross contaminate there. And then here I just did because I'm moving it across the kitchen. But this is something I'm just going to be eating. You know, my husband, so my husband and I, should I say. And I'm just cutting off the ends. And let's see, I think I might cut off a little bit more. And I just want to have, you know, some, I might just put those in and have smaller, cut them on the diagonal so I have two hot, smaller sprigs. So I want to put this whole thing in my dish. And I don't have a lot here, just a little bit. I'm going to put the leaves in there and everything. This should look really pretty. Nice and fresh dish. Let's throw those leaves in there. Watch your hands. I'm thinking this should take about five to seven minutes to steam. That one looks a little woody, so we're not going to put that one in there. But there we go. That part's done. We'll let that steam a little bit. I'll put my timer on, so I'm not. All right, let's prep up our scallions and our garlic. I'll do my garlic first. Put this in my little bowl here. And I could, you could already use the already minced garlic. I had these clothes and I, I need to use them up. So these fresh, I say fresh, I've had them for a few weeks. So, and I'm going to do kind of big slices because I'm going to, I want it to really flavor and I don't mind having a big chunk for myself. I'll pull it out for my husband. I'll pull the garlic chunks out of there. If it's bigger, I can see it better. Because he always seems to get stuck with a piece. So I thought, let me do a big chunk. I can see it. I was like, if you love garlic, you love it. But if you don't, it's, I suppose it's not enjoyable. <laughs> Take the skin off. And my steamed broccolini is, should be done. And let's make sure this is, yeah, it's good. So I'm going to just turn it off, the heat off. And I might, I think I'll put the lid on a little bit while I prep this other stuff. All right. I have been thinking about this recipe. I was like, you know, it's zucchini season and I wanted something a little different. Um, so I'm always looking for something different from zucchini. What about you? Like, what's your favorite? Do you have a favorite go to zucchini? I mean, yeah, we all have to make zucchini zucchini bread right which i have some zucchini on the counter i need to shred up but sometimes i have good intentions of preparing stuff and then it's like oh i let that zucchini go too much uh some of it i had to buy more for this dish because we're doing a three a three green um Pasta dish. I don't know what I'll call it. I have to come up with a name since I'm inventing it here. <laughs> I'm sure somebody probably thought of something like this. But so you see how shallots look. This are like a got a purple flesh to them, but the inside is kind of whitish green, mostly white. But see how that looks. 
and a lot of times you'll have them like that. So I'm just going to cut thin slices, really thin, just because I think it'll add to the texture in the bite of this dish. I mean, shallots are a milder onion anyway. I just think this will look real pretty in the dish. So I've been wanting to make this for about three weeks. Just haven't gotten around to it. And I, want, I hadn't done a pasta night for you in a while. So I was like, I need to do another pasta night. I need to make this dish. And so here you see. So I am going to take these sausages out. Now we've got the grease from there. So I guess it's going to be more of a reddish look. Um, which I wanted it like to be a garlicky, olive oil, buttery. Um, I don't think I need olive oil. I think I'm going to skip that because look at all this grease in there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put the shallots in there. I love shallots. It's got a, just a, like a different... Dimension of oniony, onioniness. All right, so we got that done. I'm not going to put the garlic in quite yet. We'll let this cook a little bit. We've already cooked our pasta. So this part is going to go pretty quick. So let's get our zucchini. I've had this soaking in a bath with water and vinegar. And I'm going to use the skins on there because I just think it's going to look pretty. I got this zucchini at my local farmer's market. So nice and fresh. I'm going to cut off the ends. And then I'm going to cut it in half. Let's see if I can get a little closer. All right, so I cut it in half. Now I'm going to cut it lengthwise in half and then I'm going to cut the lengths in half. I might actually do thirds because I want little chunks of this. Remember I have this on low and I'm going to turn it up on two because I think that was just too low. And so I've cut this in thirds and just gonna make little, little bite-sized pieces. Probably like a half an inch, maybe. And let me get a bowl for that. Let's get a oh, let's see. If I, have, I guess I'll just have to use a white bowl. Now, if I wanted to even make these smaller, but remember zucchini cuts down, I could cut down and uh, let me just show you what I mean, because I have a whole nother zucchini. I could do it in layers like that if I wanted to make it a little smaller. And we're just cutting it in thirds. That means I'm going to have to cut these down a little bit. This, this will cook very, very fast. That one layer was a lot smaller. I guess I don't have to cut these down too much. Nah. It smells good. The shallots smell so good, especially in that oil. I hope I'm going to like this. I think I will. Cut this again lengthwise down the middle and cut it into thirds. Last year, was it last year? No, I guess it's been a couple of years ago. I did this one zucchini dish 
that um, was like for a dinner party. It was very elegant. I sliced, I took zucchini and sliced it in very thin uh, layers, kind of like almost like a lasagna noodle. And then I made this vegetable uh, crab stuffing uh, with peppers and mushrooms and onions and uh, fresh crab meat. And I put the crab meat in, I mean, I like layers. I did like a layers of, of three. I did one layer of zucchini, a layer of the crab uh, mixture, and then another layer of zucchini, more crab mixture, and then a zucchini layer on top. And I think I posted that video on my, on my channel. Um, and so, and I think I posted that video on my Facebook page. Um, you'll have to look back, but if I didn't, I'll repost. If I didn't do it, I'll repost. All right. Let's look at these onions. They're doing well. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. I'm going to put my garlic in there. want it really garlicky. All right, now I feel like I... Now let's cook this a little bit. Release some of the oils. And I'm going to put a little bit of butter in there and then cook the zucchini. We got the broccolini and what's the third green? Spinach. Oh, this is smelling good. Um, I did salt my water a little bit too much on my pasta. I was thinking I was doing it like I was doing a whole pound. I forgot. No, I'm not. So I'm going to go easy on the salt when I salt and pepper this. Okay, so let's put a little bit of butter. All right. Put that butter. Oh, I don't have to cook this too long. I want to put the butter in now. I'm not going to. I don't want to brown it. Let's put our zucchini. This will only need to probably cook maybe a couple of minutes, three minutes maybe. I'm going to get that good and coated. Now it's soaking up. That zucchini is still soaking up that oil. So now I think I can hit it with a some olive oil. Probably put like two tablespoons of olive oil. I can't tell you how incredible this smells. <laughs> I think you're gonna well we'll have to see i'll taste it because this is just a test this is a test <laughs> of the emergency drug test this is no remember those days when we used to have the tv on and i'm sure they still do it but i haven't seen one in years have you seen those you know what i'm talking about some of us that some of you that are my age you can remember um i think the tv that would have a big like bullseye or like some kind of signal and it would flash. This is only a test and it'll be like high pitched sound. Anyway. I don't see it anymore. I don't know if it really is. So let me keep watching my time. I'm going to get my spinach out. I'm going to put that in at the very end. And I'm just using yeah, bag spinach. Run that through and rinse that off a little. Oh, I've got all my. Well, I'm gonna have to use my other colander because I've got the broccoli in there. I should have done this before. Now, remember, spinach cooks down quite a bit. Probably like doing two cups. I'm giving that a good rinse. I should put it through my spinner so it's 
not making this dish all soggy. I don't want that. Now, part of me was like, okay, so this is where I was going with this at first. So I was like thinking, oh, I want it to be a lemony olive oil and butter type of dish. Um, but now I forgot about that this would be red. Well, I didn't know it would be so red once I cooked it. So it's going to change the look of it. And I don't know if the lemon, but... I have to look at the package again. I'm going to go ahead and turn this down a little bit. It's almost, almost two minutes that I've cooked this. And I'm going to use a couple of tablespoons. Because remember, we're going to add our diddly to here too. All right. And we want it to be plenty of sauciness because we've got a lot of things to cover. I'm going to do three tablespoons of butter. All right. And I think I'm going to try a little lemon. I don't know. That's right. I was going to look at the package and let you know if there was citrus in this or not. In the spices for the longanisa. It's made with pork, vinegar, salt, citrus fiber. So, hey, we are good to go. I'm, I'm saying we're good to go, I think. I think we're going to be safe. So let's put a little bit of lemon zest in there. I always buy a bunch of lemons, and then I soak them in my vegetable bath, or vegetable bath, water bath with vinegar. Vegetable. Oh, it's been a long day. <laughs> anyway, I would soak them and then uh, dry them up, and then I have plenty of lemons because you know we do a lot of recipes. We need lemons or lemon water. I love to drink lemon water in the summer. One of my favorite drinks. So I guess I'm doing the zest of one lemon, and then I'll probably take a little bit of this juice. I'll juice a little bit of it. Ooh, watch the fingers. All right. Move this stuff out of the way. All right, let's put the sausage in there. I'm going to cut that up. <laughs> Little bite-sized pieces. I think it'll look pretty. You know, sometimes you have an idea if you want to try a new dish and you're like, oh, I hope this lives up to my expectations. But there's no harm in trying because sometimes you'll try a recipe and you just have to tweak some things. It's all part of creating. Take a look at that sausage. Yes, it looks a lot like chorizo. Have you ever had chorizo? That's a Mexican sausage and it's... Uh, it, it's very fine when you cook it up. It looks like uh, ground beef almost, but it's even smaller, smaller texture than ground beef. One thing I almost forgot is I had these little cherry tomatoes. I needed them. To, I needed to use them up, and I had already planned to put them in there. So let's chop some of those up. Have this on low. I'm just going to cut them in half. They've already been cleaned. I leave them on the counter so 
you want a snack, you can grab a couple of cherry tomatoes. Makes a yummy snack, doesn't it? So I thought this would give it a pretty pop of color. And this should be a pretty nutritious dish. Trying to move fast because I don't want to overcook my zucchini. I took it off the heat for a couple of minutes while I was cleaning up. I'm just making a big mess anyway, but I better turn this up a little bit. Probably should have threw the tomatoes in there a little bit before I put the zucchini, but... Yeah, so I thought I would put the lemon juice, and then part of me was like, at first I was I was going to use like a sweet sausage, and um, I thought, oh, how about a little vermouth in it? I love to cook with vermouth. I love the, the flavor it gives dishes. Um, but then I saw this sausage, and I said, you know what, let's do this. It's something totally different from what I normally do. So I feel like that's pretty good. All right, so let's add our ditalini. Sorry there. Let's add, because then we're going to add our, so we want this to have a nice, we want it to flavor. And I, the reason why I chose ditalini is because it's small and um, short, a short pasta. And I thought a lot of the, juices could get down in the hole and have all this hold all this yumminess now see that's taking up a lot of the that liquid is absorbing right into the the, the pasta that's why i feel like you have to serve this kind of quick Because it's going to soak up and expand. And that's not what we do. So let me do a little taste test to see if I need any pepper or anything. I'm feeling like I don't need salt. Oh, that's good. I want to crack the juice. The lemon juice. Oh. Let's put the broccolini in there. Is that too hot to handle? No. Put that aside. Not looking pretty. So we have the zucchini, the broccolini, and let's put the spinach in there. Now you could run this through a spinner. I just let it sit in my colander. And I'm using about two cups of spinach. And I use baby spinach, so I didn't have to take off the stems. It's so tender. This will be fun to cook down, though, right? I needed a bigger pan. I was just so anxious to make this. It's floating all over the place. Let's put those pieces over here. All right, we'll let this cook down. We'll come back in a few seconds. All right, it cooked down. Didn't take long at all. I put about another tablespoon of uh, olive oil because that ditalini was sticking to the bottom a little. I'll just use a spatula to pull it up. So let's put a little squeeze of lemon juice. I'll take the butt of the lemon, just a little little bit, and squeeze it. Because we did see this had the citrus, so I think this will brighten it up a little bit. It tastes fabulous. Um, just when we did that little taste test. But we're gonna put this on a pretty plate. Let's put a little crack of pepper. 
This is a keeper, I think. Now, if you like it a little spicy, you could put a little crushed red pepper. That'll taste fabulous. Uh, let me set this aside. I'm letting that lemon just get in there. Mix this up a little bit. Doesn't that look like a nice summer dish? It's pretty. All right. All right. Let's give it a taste test. Here's the proof and if the proof will be in the pudding, how it tastes. I'm just gonna use my spatula because I've made enough dirty dishes. I'm just taking in a little bit, let it cool down. Let's see, I got, yep, I turned my stove off. Uh, let's see how, let's take a look at it though. I wanna, I wanna wipe the edge of my bowl so it looks pretty. So here we have the Ditalini. We've got the zucchini, the cherry tomatoes, and our broccolini, and our spinach, and our sausage. So letting this cool down a little bit. But this didn't take very long. You could always cook your Ditalini the night before. I'm all about if you can pre prep things. And um, now some people. <sighs> The thing about when it is warmer, I will say this about the pasta, um, it'll soak in the flavors. But you can rehydrate your pasta, what I do a lot of times, is I'll take um, my pasta and I'll put it in a bowl. I, you know, after I've, let's see, I cook my pasta, drain it, put it in a storage bag. Usually that's how I store it in my fridge. And then the next, if I'm going to, if I'm making it the night before, the next night, I'll just put it in a, a good bowl, not a plastic bowl, but like a glass bowl. And then I'll put, I'll heat up some hot water in my tea kettle and I'll pour that over there and let it sit for a few minutes and um, then drain it and kind of reconstitutes it as far as it gets nice. And then you can ha add that heated pasta um, to your dish so it can soak in all the flavor. So... I've stalled enough that it's cool down and I won't burn my mouth, hopefully. So let's, looks like I want to get some of this broccolini. Let's try it. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's really good. It's so close to what? I wanted it is throwing me off a little bit because it's red and I didn't want it red but I use the sausage so that's what I get but oh my gosh it tastes really good this is not overpowering with the garlic um to me it's just right oh my god it is so good you gotta try this well let's try some of the sausage because I've never had the sausage Mmm, very tasty. Mmm. Now, I was reading up on it. Oh, the heat after you eat it. There's a little bit of heat in the back of your throat. Not crazy, but oh, that was good. Because I'm a wimp when it comes to spicy hot. So if I can take it, most of y'all can take it. That was really good. That was my first. Yeah, you can taste a little bit of that vinegariness and gar garlic. Now I read up on it and it says that it's intense garlic, but I, I didn't think it was intense garlic. So I hope you like this video. I hope you enjoyed a new dish. I had fun trying to create it. We got a crate, right? And um, let me know in the comments if you think you'll try it. Hey, if you do try it, take a picture of it and put it in the comments or let us know. Okay. So I'm going to go clean up and sit down and enjoy dinner. 
this would taste great with some crusty Italian bread too, wouldn't This is like, okay, so with this sausage, it's like a Filipino, this is like a Italian Filipino fusion dish. American, American, Italian. <laughs> I'm getting silly, I'm tired. So anyway, I had fun. Try this four green diddlini pasta dish. I'll come up with a better name. Doreen's four green, right? Four greens. Yeah, broccolini, zucchini. Oh, three green. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this three green diddlini pasta dish with broccolini, zucchini, and spinach. It tastes fabulous.